In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint an ear using oils. Now there isn't a formula or just one way to paint an ear. Each portrait may be completely different. Your subject's ears could be in shadow or they might be viewed from the front so that we can't see as much of them. But here we have an ear viewed from the side so we can see it really clearly. This means I'm going to have to paint this ear with quite a lot of detail. I'll start thinking about the ears in the early stages of the painting, blocking them in along with all the other large shapes that make up my subject. In this case, because they're receiving the same amount of light, I've masked in the ear with the same flesh colour that I used for the other light areas. Now, you may remember this portrait from my previous video on how to paint someone with darker skin. This is also one of the demos from my Alla Prima portrait painting course, which you can see over on my Patreon channel. Because I'm going to be doing a whole series of portrait demos for that course, I thought I'd also do a series of shorter videos on here on how to paint individual features. So stay tuned for upcoming videos on how to paint the eyes and mouth. But for this first one, because my model is being viewed from the side, I'm going to start with the ear. Whenever I paint a portrait, I will pretty much always wait until after I've completed the other main features, the eyes, nose and mouth, before starting the ear. That way I can use the other features to make sure the ear is placed accurately. Here I'm checking to see how the top of the ear lines up horizontally with the eye. Then I'm scratching out the top of the ear with the back of my brush. So there's no point trying to paint the ear before you've placed the eyes, nose and mouth as you don't want to end up with a beautifully painted ear only to discover that it's in the wrong place after the other features have been added. And now I'm checking to see how the bottom of the ear lines up horizontally with the area in between the bottom of the nose and the upper lip. But while it's quite straightforward to check the height of the ear by lining it up horizontally with the eyes, nose and mouth, there's no way to check the distance from the features out to the ear. And this is one of the most common mistakes we see people make when painting the ear. They place it either too far away or too close to the other features. The only way we have to determine the correct distance from the features out to the ear is by learning to see proportion accurately and being able to judge horizontal distances compared to vertical distances. For instance, in this case, I'm fairly certain about the length of the nose, the distance from the bottom of the eyes down to the bottom of the nose. If I can visualize a rectangle from the nose out to the ear, and I get the height to width ratio of this rectangle correct, this will give me the horizontal distance between the nose and the ear. This ability to convert your subject into flat shapes and then judge the height and width of these shapes correctly is absolutely fundamental for drawing with accurate proportion. Once I'm happy my ear is in the right place, I'm ready to add the smaller shapes and details. I'm going to start by placing the most prominent shape that I see, the warm shadow inside the ear. Once again, I'm checking the height of this small shadow by lining it up horizontally with the bottom of the nose. Here, I'm using some of the flesh colour for the main areas of light to adjust the bottom edge of this small shadow, making it a little higher. I'm then taking a slightly lighter flesh colour and I'm using it to place the most prominent light shape that I see. The small flap of skin just in front of the ear, 
which is called the tragus. Next, I'm going back to the warm shadow colour and I'm using it to define the shape of the shadow inside the ear. The shadows in the ear will usually be a little warmer than the other shadows in the painting. Also notice how this dark inside the ear isn't as dark as my other dark accents. Even though we can see quite a lot of detail in this ear, it's really important that it doesn't distract from the other features, which are the main centres of interest. So we need to be really careful not to over-exaggerate the values. Don't make the shadows too dark and be absolutely certain that any small light shapes in the ear do not become lighter than the other highlights in your painting. Do you see how the colour I'm using here isn't the lightest colour on my palette? I'm going to use this colour to place another light shape that I see on the inside of the ear. And here I'm placing another small shadow shape on the earlobe. Next, I'm placing a shadow under the topmost part of the ear, called the helix. And here, I'm placing the small light shape right at the front of the helix. Another thing that's really important if we don't want our ear to be distracting is to try not to get caught up in too much detail. When viewed from the front or if the ear is in shadow, you won't need much detail. But in a situation like this where the ear is viewed from the side and we're presented with a lot of information, achieving the right level of detail can be quite tricky. Just like with any other complicated subject, the way to approach it is to squint, then start by adding the most prominent details that you see. You may find that's all it needs, but if your ear still looks unfinished, gradually open your eyes and add the next most prominent detail. Then keep going until your ear starts to look really lifelike. As soon as you add too many details, which will very likely be the case, your ear will start to look graphical like an illustration and it will lose its lifelike appearance. When that happens, dial back the level of detail, removing the last few that were added. Here I'm placing another small shadow shape just inside the outer edge of the ear. Achieving the right level of detail requires a lot of thought, so take your time. The main thing is to keep squinting and try to restrain yourself from painting every single small piece of information that you see. Also, make sure you don't over-exaggerate the value of your smaller shapes. Here, I'm mixing some black for my subject's hair. I'm going to use this dark hair colour to define the outer edge of the ear. Finally, I'm softening the outside edge in a few places so that my ear doesn't appear too cut out. So there we have it. How to paint an ear using oils. I hope that was helpful. Remember, if you want to see the rest of this demo filmed in real time, it's available to watch over on my Patreon channel. Until next time, good luck with your painting and thank you for watching.